In this video, we'll look at some examples of naming amines and alcohols. Amines and alcohols are structurally similar. In alcohols, there is an oxygen-hydrogen, OH, group attached somewhere to the molecule. And when that happens, the suffix of the name becomes ol, O-L. In amines, there is a nitrogen-hydrogen, usually NH2, group attached, and then the suffix is amine. Let's try these examples. First, we've got a simple amine. First, identify the main chain. There are five carbons, so it's based on pentane. But the end carbon has an amine group attached. So the name is changed from pentane to pentanamine. Note that we keep the an from pentane to indicate that there are no double bonds in the molecule. But we also have to indicate where the amine group is attached. So in this case, being on the end and numbering the carbons, the name will become pentan-1-amine. So the second one. Here the main chain is a ring made of five carbons, so it's based on cyclopentane. Now if we pretend for a second that there's only one alcohol group attached, then the name would be cyclopentanol. But there are two of them, so we indicate this by calling it a diol, two alcohols, and the name becomes cyclopentane diol. For some reason, tradition dictates that we keep the E on the end of the pentane because it's a diol. So with just one alcohol group, it would be cyclopentanol, but with two, it becomes cyclopentane diol. Except if you're writing in German, they leave the E off. Ich weiß nicht warum. So anyway, there are two alcohol groups and we need to say where they are. So we will start numbering at one of them and continue around until we get to the other. Now we'll go the shortest way so as to keep the numbers low. So that will make it cyclopentane 1,3-diol. Note that like with alkenes, we insert the numbers into the middle of the name just before the suffix to show that the numbers refer to the two alcohol groups. Lastly, this wacky looking thing. Still, it can be broken down and solved using what we know already. First, the longest chain. Six carbons uh, and all single bonds, so it's based on hexane. Next, the functional group here is amine, but there are three of them. Now, we'll number the chain from the right, which will give us amines on carbons number one, two, and six. Uh, notice that if you did it the other way round, the numbers would be 1, 5 and 6, so they'd be higher overall. So that gives us hexane 1, 2, 6 triamine. Again, note that we're keeping the E on the end of hexane because there's more than one of these functional groups. Okay, now the substituents. We have 3 chloro and 2 4 methyls. So we need to put all that together and we need to list the substituents alphabetically. So that gives us 3-chloro, 4,4-dimethylhexane, 1,2,6-triamine. Done! Do you feel the adrenaline? 